Hello everyone and welcome to today's episode of Leadnap Gaming. Last week we opened up the can of worms on the new Misk Expanse. This week we're going to make some updates. Last week, I produced a video on the Misk Expanse, to which CIG then gave us a sales page and we got more information. I do want to make this first point very clear. Ordinarily, I would have waited for CIG to release the sales page so that more information would have been on hand to provide to you, the viewer. However, CIG had already begun sales of the Expanse, which prompted me to produce the video and release it. Just before the video published to you fine viewers, CIG then released the sales page, which answered some of the questions I posted in the video. That information wasn't yet available when the video was uploaded to YouTube. I did say that when CIG gave us more details, I would update my position, which is what we're going to do today for the most part. However, nothing CIG released on the sales page dramatically changed anything I had written. They just provided some limited answers. There were a number of major themes appearing in the comments, and this week I want to address those themes and further clarify positions that I took. I very much need to establish this point again, perhaps with more detail. The Misk Expanse is in my opinion one of the best ships CIG has come up with. On paper, meaning looking at the stats, the ship is exactly the sort of thing I want to be seeing from CIG. It fills the refining gap in the mining gameplay. Single seat but cooperative with other single seat ships provides a fantastic added approach to multiplayer play. Size is fantastic and the look of the ship in my opinion is awesome. I even give them major points for developing a ship design that shouldn't be burdensome on their programmers to get flyable in game. Yes, I said don't buy one right now, but I meant that as right now, not never. This ship is a must have for mining mains and will be a solid money maker if used correctly for neutral single players and orcs. In the mining fleet videos I produced last year, this ship was one I spoke regularly about. We're going to get more into the weeds on this later, but for now understand that my position on not buying one today is related specifically to purchasing it as a concept. If you're worried about the price, it's a $15 difference of war bonding it today. That's a burrito at your favorite casual burrito joint. If you're into LTI, buy a Cuddy Black CCU for it and apply it to a token down the road. Just don't melt that CCU. If it's about the concierge paint, just buy the paint, your concierge. The little added cost of the paint pack shouldn't bother you. So let's hit the meat and potatoes on this, the concept issue. Now, a lot of you last week felt like I was being negative about an awesome concept ship. There's really two issues here and I'm going to cover both. Up first, why this shouldn't be a concept sale. I said last week there was no excuse for releasing a single seat concept ship at this point in development. This is two steps backwards from a company that told us they were not going to keep working on ships that have missing game elements. Now, I know some people are going to split hairs and or take that literally. The Expanse is very much a ship that should be released in 2022. As I said last week, the backend programming for mining is already in game. Right away, as part of the ship's development, the UI for that refinery play shouldn't be a major tasking. CIG used the asset pack that was just completed for the whole A to make the Expanse, which is how they plan to do all their ship development, and that's a good thing. The ship is designed with minimal interior spaces and no new assets to be created. On this position, CIG really should have released us a flyable version of the ship. 317 is supposed to include all sorts of new mining game loop improvements. Player refining should have been one of those. I know plenty of folks have pointed out that ship tractor beams are not yet in game, and sure, that's a holdup. Again though, there is the lingering question why we don't have them if we already have tractor beams in game. But that aside, CIG could have put a stand-in terminal transfer that works just like ground stations for cargo running. That too is stand-in tech. And again, this tech is already in game and doesn't represent a major use of programming time. Anyhow, I did say it's two steps back, and because of well, the first step's not being flyable, this release is actually worse than most of the single seat concept sales we've had recently. If CIG had to release this as a concept ship, they could have done what's been done a number of times now in similar circumstances. 
given us a date. The Talons and Ares fighters, for example, were sold as concepts, but with a you'll have this sooner rather than later promise attached. Ship tractor beams and refinery gameplay are both set to go live this year. Does that mean the Expanse will also release to Flyable this year? No. After all, torpedoes and scanning already exist in the game, but the Polaris and Perseus continue existence as concepts. CIG not putting any sort of guarantee that the Expanse will come live once the two obstructions to it working in-game is a concern. Even if they said it should release in 318, but we might push it back, this would have been an improvement. I realize this might seem like splitting hairs, but if gameplay elements you plan to release this year are holding back releasing the ship to flyable, we should get a confirmation that this will be flyable soon if so. Otherwise, CIG just continues to provide ammunition to the scam citizen crowd and damage their own credibility. The fact most buyers are assuming the expanse will come out quickly when the tech we're supposed to be getting is the second problem. Not just that assumption, but all of them. I take serious issue with the double concepting. I would have not docked the points on it being a concept ship had they released it as flyable and said the refining tech will be in soon. I still would have said don't purchase it yet. Why? The player refinery concept is exactly that. There's simply too many questions about how it will work in the greater gameplay. This is where two more branches extend in our decision tree. From here, the first issue is just the unknown. Is the refinery more efficient than the station refinery? How long will it take? Do you have to remain logged in and at the UI terminal the entire time? Is there a risk involved with improper refining, just like with improper mining? This is where if you take nothing else away this week, take this. Too many people are making too many assumptions. I asked those questions last week, and many were quick to insert answers grounded in absolutely nothing. I could pick apart numerous examples, but let's just stick to one, Quantanium. A solid number of players felt this would be the perfect ship with Pyro coming out, because without refining facilities in the system, it would take too long to transport Quantanium from Pyro back to Stanton safely. There's nothing to dispute insofar as the lack of facilities to refine Quantanium and Pyro. Nowhere has CIG said the Expanse would be the solution to that problem. Well, yeah, but CIG doesn't divine all sorts of things. True. However, CIG does tend to be very careful with wording and materials. CIG says the Expanse efficiently ingresses raw ore, refines it, and distributes sealable material into empty cargo containers. Stabilization is omitted in that sentence. In fact, there's further evidence to consider that the Expanse specifically cannot refine quantanium. Everything else CIG has said this patch cycle. The MISC Starfarer carries and potentially refines both hydrogen and quantum fuel, doing so in giant liquid tanks and distributing the final product via pipes as liquid. The Starfarer lacks the ability to refine mineral ores. This is because CIG has clearly inserted a difference in refining fuels and refining minerals. Quantanium falls into the fuel category, and this schism presents a major red flag for potential buyers. Just because station refineries can do it, doesn't mean all refineries can. Just look at mining. You can't hand mine Quantanium. After all, the Odyssey has a special reactor that allows it to refine Quantanium, and nothing else, suggesting unique refinery equipment is required for that material. Which should lead anyone to ask the question to themselves, if the Expanse can't stabilize Quantanium, where does its value fit? The majority of comments I received were about the incredible versatility of stabilizing Quantanium and Pyro and bringing it back to Stanton. But what if it can't do that? Concerningly, CIG hasn't answered this for themselves either. There is no SCU container for refined Quantanium in-game. When loaded, it appears as empty cargo in your hold. Of course, the Expanse doesn't use SCU containers as well, which is another problem. The entire point of standardized container units is exactly that, standardization. How many sealable cargo pods fit on a C2? In theory, you could take the units to units. We know the Prospector carries 32 SCU in four bags, suggesting each bag is 8 SCU, but the Mole carries 96 SCU in six UEE standard mineral pods. That would make each bag hold 16 SCU. CIG clarifies this by telling us the Expanse has eight, eight SCU bags for a total of 64 SCU. 
but that means a single expanse can't handle a mole. Sure, it wasn't built to, but does that make it incompatible with the mole? There are other logistical issues at play involving SCU and efficiency. The most commonly cited plan was to have one or more prospectors, an expanse, and a star fare to keep them all fueled. The fare would also carry the refined sealed containers back to port for sale. Cool plan, but a more efficient loadout would be to just use a cat and take all the unrefined bags. This saves fuel because all the fuel on the fare can be used for the prospectors. And a cat with even 50% tailings would carry more than 100% of a starfarer refined sealed pods. The cat has longer and faster legs, added weaponry to protect the claim site, and potentially refining modules of its own someday. The last part's irrelevant, but the point begs the greater question. Anyone who's played Star Citizen for a while knows that there are right and wrong ways to do things in the verse. You can transport a C2 full of waste back and forth for a month and make nothing. Or take that C2 full of titanium once and make way more money. The worst assumption in play is that mining claims in Pyro are economical at all. Remember that per CIG, Pyrotechnic Amalgated, who discovered Pyro, determined, and I quote, this survey simply noted the overall disarray of the planetary system, the difficulty of finding transportable resources, and the unlikelihood of successfully terraforming anything there. Regardless, further CIG writings indicate that the planets have been stripped clean of all mineral resources. So how many players are buying a concept ship that will do concept gameplay in a system CIG repeatedly tells us will have nothing of value? Which takes us to the second branch. Purchases on concept are dangerous. I highlighted the game balance problems with the conceptual refinery gameplay and how it wouldn't balance with using station refining. Time and time again, CIG has shown us the danger of assumptions here. Just take a look at the Ares. Ship to ship combat isn't even conceptual. We can do it in the verse today. CIG concepted the Ares as a ship that could take on much larger ships as a single seater, and everyone picked them up because who wouldn't want the new meta? Then the nerfs happened. Who still has an Ares? Pop went the Idris. Drawing us the worst CIG sin of all. One that would not be a problem if the ship were straight to flyable. The release. Right away, the easy part here is that once it became available to concierge, the sales page too should have been available. However, fans may note that CIG didn't post a Q&A this week following the release, like they normally do. That's because they're on break. Let's be clear, the most important question we all need to know is the Quantanium bit, but there are plenty more answers we deserve if being asked to pledge money, and all we hear is silence. I know some people felt that I was being overly negative, but this has more to do with respecting ourselves as consumers. We are being asked to give up 10 burritos worth of real-world money for a concept we've been teased for years now. Not only are we not getting follow-up Q&A, but this is one of the most barren sales pages for a new concept in a long time. The Perseus gave us far more information about the ship concept, and it does things we already know in depth about. There is a difference between saying, I don't recommend buying this concept and being negative about the ship. I love this thing. I think it looks awesome. I really do want one from what we know and what the gameplay elements in Star Citizen I enjoy most are. Already it's been suggested though that this is just the entry level refining ship and that Argo will probably have one that pairs better with the mole for higher output. By now we've hammered that whole thing about assumptions, but CIG supports this by providing multiple tiers of gameplay for every economic loop. It would also be a smart sell financially for CIG and for the lore if they did make an Argo refinery ship. I took this new account in my recommendation. If there comes an Argo refinery that's better, and likely far more efficient in all the areas that matter, wouldn't it be better to warbond to that, especially if gameplay loops for The Expanse are not out yet? If The Expanse were flyable, this would be a no-brainer. It's the only player refinery, take it or leave it. When the Argo 1 would come out in the future, the financial hit would have been worth it in the gameplay enjoyed in between. However, with no knowledge of when The Expanse will be playable, what if the release of that gameplay coincides with the second player refinery release? Why not just Warbond then? I may be answering the question in the negative, and may be upset that CIG didn't handle this better, leading to more time spent talking about the problems, but that's because the best parts of the ship don't need explaining or further detail. 
It feels like the expanse is in my wallet refining already with the heat that's trying to burn a hole in my pocket. I want to buy this ship, I really do. In fact, I really want to grab one up and give it away since it's really the sort of thing someone who wins one's likely to enjoy. I can't do it in good faith though, because I've been making content on Star Citizen for years and I take seriously any suggestion I make to you, the audience, about if you should or shouldn't buy something. Likewise, it falls into a range that I just don't think is worth spending real world money on. Without a Prospector to feed it, the Expanse cannot generate a single UEC. As a pair to the Prospector, it won't be overly expensive in game, meaning, like the Anvil Arrow, this just isn't a good ship to spend real money on, rather it's a great investment to pick up with UEC. Owning a Prospector means one day you can start generating currency. Owning an Expanse means you have to find people you can refine for. It's the same reason I own a Prospector and not a Mole. Will CIG sell a ton of these this concept sale? You bet. Plenty of people are going to tell me I'm wrong. Plenty of people will buy it anyways and love it. I cannot wait to get into one. My recommendation not to buy them isn't grounded in some sort of financial protest. CIG will certainly not feel any pain from my recommendation. If CIG did release this differently, I might have had a different response, and if they're watching, I would certainly hope that if they take into consideration concerns I've had and apply them to future releases. I am still a backer, I will continue to back in the future, and I cannot wait to run the refinery on an expanse. Critical evaluation, though, is healthy. Once again, I yield the floor to you, my awesome audience. What are your thoughts here on the ship going forward? If you felt I was still overly negative, fear not, I have one more Expanse video to come, and that's all about how awesome the ship is. So stay tuned for that. Make sure to subscribe and comment, because if refining Quantanium is your thing, you're then entered to win a Misc Odyssey by just doing that. Make sure to share this video with your friends, and I will catch you all next time. <laughs>